Sailors who have spent nights out on the water, what's the sketchiest encounter you've had out there in the dark? Scariest thing that ever happened to me was in port. I was a sailor on the Uth Care, stationed in Norfolk. There was a shipmate who had gotten himself in trouble and was being kicked out of the navy. He was not allowed to leave the ship. I saw him on Friday carrying weights out of the ship's gym, odd but I didn't pay much mind, I had to come in for duty the next day, and he had vanished overnight. We searched the entire ship from top to bottom three times over. No sign of him. We found out later he tied the weight from the gym to his feet and jumped overboard the night before. He washed up three weeks later when his corpse detached from the weight and floated to the surface. Sailing just a couple miles off the Norwegian coast, in an old 14 foot dinghy all by my lonesome. Well, S-A-I-L-I-N-G is the wrong word, I was drifting in near zero wind, barely making a knot of headway. That's why I was still out there, I had planned to spend the night on a small island, but getting there took forever, and it got pitch dark. No matter, I was safe enough, and it was kind of nice to have the nighttime ocean all to myself, not a ship in sight anywhere. I had oars and could have rowed to my destination in an hour or so, but didn't feel like there was any need to hurry, had left the outboard motor ashore because of hunting laws against shooting from a motorized vessel, and I was going after my grating geese. At my position it was calm and quiet, but all around the horizon I saw flashes of lightning so far off that I heard no thunder. As I relaxed and enjoyed the quiet spectacle of distant lightning, all of a sudden I heard someone or something draw a labored breath right next to me. It was unmistakably the sound of breathing, like from a half-strangled person taking a deep breath of much needed air. Not gonna lie, I briefly panicked before I realized it had to be some marine mammal surfacing for air close to my boat. Guessing it was a harbor porpoise as they are common here, but I never saw it in the darkness. Heard it again a few times, sounded like it moved further away and there may have been more than one, based on the frequency. Of course sound carries far at night, but it really did sound like that initial breath was right behind me, close enough to touch. Shortly after the breathing sounds disappeared, the wind picked up out of nowhere, and I had to scramble to adjust rigging. Made it to the correct island, and made landfall about 20 minutes later, having gone from idly drifting on the current to skipping over the waves in a few heartbeats. I guess that distant storm dropped by to say hello. Many times in open water in Mexico, while sailing at night we had dolphins come out of nowhere in the pitch black, and they would glow in the water, and it was almost magical. Norwegian sailor boy here. My ship got a total blackout during night time. You think you've experienced total darkness? You haven't. Trust me. I woke up in full panic. Not because of any alarms going off. Not because of anyone waking me or anyone shouting. But because of the air deafening silence coming from a 100 meter long ship. No power. No emergency light. No engines. Drifting in open sea. To this day I never ever leave for work without at least two working flashlights. I was on watch following the backside beach of the Cape on radar, while steaming up to P-Town to go fishing for giant bluefin. Clear calm summer night. The edge of the radar screen indicates a white wall return approaching from the NE. Ever so slowly, like 20 minutes, it eventually covers half the entire screen. I'm completely clueless and terrified at the same time when suddenly it begins to pour buckets and the wind came up to about 40 knots. A true classic nighttime squall that nearly pushed us all the way to the beach. Everything that wasn't tied down was on the deck. The cutty was like a tornado went through. Storm passed and we steamed on under the star filled sky, but man that was some scary shit. Not a sailor, but I went on a night dive and the guide had all of us turn our torches off, so we could see the bioluminescent bacteria in the water. It was really dope, until he gave the signal to turn our torches back on. We all did, and then we hear a muffled scream coming from someone in our group, because there's a massive barracuda right behind us, I'm talking like 7 feet long and its teeth were huge. It stayed where it was as we moved along, but if we weren't in such a big group it would have probably killed one of us. We also saw an enormous sea turtle, that swam by a few times. Its tail was longer than my arm easily. It followed us around for most of the dive at a safe distance. 
I was helicopter mechanic deployed on a destroyer, aviation machinist mate third class for my lurking sailors, saw lights on the horizon. Nothing out of the ordinary. Then I saw a flare go straight up into the night sky, called it into the quarter deck. Took us maybe 15 minutes to turn and get there. We tried to get comms, and also blew our horn. We had red lights on, and were close enough to be seen. We were either in the Arabian Sea or the Persian Gulf, so the final decision was that it was most likely a trap. Never found out either way. There was a ship off the Horn of Africa with 70 people on board, which had sunk, and we were responding to the solace call. We subsequently started looking for bodies slash people. Then during my visual scan, I saw on the flea something warm in the water. It was not moving. So naturally, we sent out a crew in a boat to investigate. It was a garbage bag full of chips from the ship. There were no survivors slash bodies found. I was on a small fishing boat last summer in Alaska, seining for anyone curious, and we were heading to a new spot, so we could wait for the shootout, day when fishing, opens and everyone sets their nets. While we were on our way there, it was my turn for wheel watch. I was watching ahead, and the deck boss was watching TV behind me. I heard static from the radio, and it was the coast guard calling to other ships in the area alerting them of two missing skiffs, smaller power boat, in the area, and asking people to keep an eye out. We were all kind of interested, so we were looking out not expecting to find anything however remaining somewhat hopeful, as we were close to the area they were thought to be near. We all took turns with the binoculars, but as night set in we started to get bored. I started to walk down to the kitchen where I had to go down a ladder that had a window next to it, near 360 view. We were in the wheelhouse, lots of windows, and I caught a glimpse of something red, I asked the deck boss who was next to the ladder looking out, and he looked through the binoculars, to see two boats beached on the coast beside us. We hail the coast guard, and honk our air horn, 3 mile audibility radius, to try to alert them, that we are coming for them. Once we get close enough we detach our power skiff and ask if man starts going out to bring one man from the beach, along with two smaller, single occupant skiffs. He returns and we wait for the coast guard to come and pick up the man. We talked with him for a bit, and he told us he was out here with a family member fishing when one of the engines died. He tethered him to his boat, but because he was pulling another boat, he ran out of gas much quicker or encountered some other engine problem. He said that his relative went to follow the coastline to look for help which was weird. I'm not from Alaska however I still found it odd that someone who is would go explore an island alone in an area teeming with wildlife, not the friendly kind. Also we blew the air horn with that as a 3 mile audible distance and no one returned for the almost hour we were there. Ud came and picked him up and we started on our way, the deck boss and the skiff man also had the same thought that the whole situation was really weird. The theory we went with is that he went fishing intending to come back alone for some reason or another. Never heard what happened after that, but it was definitely a tense situation while it was going on. On a submarine, going to periscope depth is always nerve wracking. What sonar holds is usually really accurate, but it relies on ships actually making noise. One night we went to PD on the midwatch, which means the captain was still in his rack and the zoo gave the final locator go up. Came to PD and immediately saw a fishing trawler dead in the water about 150 to 200 yards away. It was by pure chance that we didn't kill every fisherman on that vessel and do millions of dollars of damage to our submarine. Being underwater is no joke. We had a collision with another vessel that had sunk due to running aground. It was towed out by the coast guard and left with a lit up buoy. When we hit it, we were traveling at 14 knots. One meter of the sunken hull was above the water line and the light they detached had run out of battery. New moon plus midnight plus improperly disposed of sunken 50 meters motor yacht with no warning LIGHT equals big crash. Luckily there was no breach in our hull. A lot of damage though, and we did need to be towed back to Italy from Greece. That summer we also had an engine room fire underway the morning of a charter, and one of the portholes in the master cabin broke, and flooded the cabin a day before a different charter. Safe to say, that was not a fun boat to work on. To get nothing, 
you can join my discord. There is a link in the description. Have a great day.